Hey everyone, I'm Matt Evans, welcome to Board Game Replay. In this series, you're going to be joining me, along with some of my friends, just after we finish playing one of our favorite board games. We're going to sit down for a sort of post-game discussion, we're going to talk about maybe strategies or mechanics, but mostly we're going to talk about just our experience with the game and, and highlight some of our favorite moments. And as some of these moments come up during our discussion, we're going to cut away to replay clips where you're going to go back and actually see how it happened during the game. So what we're hoping to do with this is hopefully give you an experience of what it's like to sit down and play this game with a, with a group of family or friends and, and all the great things that come along with it. That being said, for our first show, we wanted to pick a game that had a fairly straightforward rule set, but also had a lot of great player interaction, so you can see things kind of going back and forth between players. So for that game, we've chosen the two to six player game of Coup by Ricky Tata and Lamame Games, recently republished by Indie Boards and Cards with this cool new resistance theme. There's already been a lot of media coverage about this game, so I won't go into too much detail, I'll spare you all the rules, but just in case you're not familiar, um, I'll give you a quick overview of it, hopefully just a minute or so. So in this game, you're going to be playing as these powerful government officials, manipulating, bluffing, and bribing your way to the top. The game's all about bluffing and deception. At the beginning of the game, you're going to be dealt two character cards, and they're going to be placed face down in front of you. They're going to just sit here. The players are going to look at them, and they're going to go face down in front of them. And during a player's turn, they're going to take one action and that they can do either from this general list of three character cards. You have these handy reference sheets in front of you. So the players will be able to take one of three very general actions, or they can use the special abilities granted by the cards that are laying down in front of them. That being said, what's cool about this game is you don't actually have to take the abilities of the character cards that you have in front of you. You can actually say you have any of these five different character cards and take that power. And as long as nobody challenges you having that card, then you get away with it and it goes right on to the next turn. However, somebody's allowed to challenge any action or counteraction you take that's granted to you by your character card. And if you don't actually have the card you say, you actually have to prove, you have to flip the card face up to prove that you have it. And if you don't actually have it, you're going to lose one of your influence, which in this game, your influence is how many cards you have down in front of you. So if I were to lose an influence, I would take a card and flip it face up. Now, everybody knows this card is no longer in the pool of cards remaining in the game, and I only have one, essentially, one life left, so I can only either get caught lying one more time, or if somebody assassinates me, I'll lose this card as well. So, the way this game's going to work is we're just going to go around the table like that, each player taking actions, maybe telling the truth, maybe totally lying about it, until either players are calling each other out, or being assassinated by player powers, or money's being stolen, and so all players have been eliminated, there's only one person standing, so... Hopefully that's a pretty basic overview of the game. You'll kind of see how some of the different player powers interact. But uh, the, the game is just really great. And it's really fun to just sit down with a group of friends and, and just play and shout back and forth. And it's a great game because it plays very quickly. So this game only plays in about 10 to 15 minutes. So for today's first episode, we're actually going to sit down and play three games of Coup. So it'll give you a good idea and we'll have some maybe some good clips to cut back to in that. So on that note, I think I just heard my friends arriving upstairs. We're going to get to some Coup and we'll be back in just a bit. So why don't we go around the table? We're gonna start with uh, we'll start with Brian over here, and uh, let's see. Let's actually start with the winners. I think that's probably a good idea. So the first game was won by Brian, and Brian, what was your strategy in going to win this game of coup, or coup as we called it about eleven times during the game? Well, having the duke in the beginning is one of the best because you can keep getting three coins, and if anyone challenges you, you can always say you have it, and they lose a card, and no one usually challenges the duke in the beginning. Yeah. And by the end, when there's almost nobody left. Actually having the Duke and being able to take three coins, you can just coup and instant take out everybody. That's a good point. Yeah. It's true, having it at the beginning. It, but towards the end of the game, it can kind of get bad if you only have the Duke because everyone knows, like, right. you're safe. You've had that for the whole if, game. If someone yeah. assassinates you, that's it. I got yeah. caught can't block. all three games with the Duke at the end of the game. You yeah. had the Duke at yeah. the end? Yeah. yeah. So that's a quick... Chris, you won the second game. What was your... What, was your, what were you trying this to do? This is your second time playing. Same. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is your, my, this my is second, your time second game ever played. Um... What's the technical term for it? Being awesome. Uh, dumb <laughs> <f> luck. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you stick with whatever you have, just don't lie ever, and just use that on yeah. random people. Yeah. That's, I, that's I went with bet. lying the third game, 
Yeah, it didn't work out so good. <laughs> <laughs> they just called me on it, and I lost. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That's fair. I think with six players, it's harder because almost all the roles are on. It's yeah. guaranteed at least all True, the roles yeah. are on the table. That's, yeah. That's the chances true. of having like three assassins on right. the table is the zero. Right. So, um, playing with six players, someone out there is going to have the card. So sorry. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely a good point. But there's other roles that you can get away with. with What's max players every first? time? It's six as the max players. Six yeah. of each. Oh, and you can have yeah. add the so, quizzer in. The Inquisitor is actually a full variant. The it actually Inquisitor replaces the ambassador. ambassador. We didn't actually play with the with the Inquisitor. You would replace, we only played with the. Yeah, and that's actually very similar to the ambassador. The only difference is that it allows you to exchange or force another oh, player that's to cool exchange. Mechanic. So that might be fun for I guess if you want a little bit more control over the game. That's I think that. what I was talking about that I think would be useful in this game, like there is in Masquerade, like that sort of mechanic where you can force somebody out of you can control other game. players yeah especially if you know like like brian was saying he has right. the duke from the beginning of the game and he's just rolling and getting money no one wants to question him they think he right. probably has it you know who won the third game you won the last game right yeah and how was did you have any specific strategy that sort of that you were going for in that game it was other people's dumb luck or lack thereof <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah. sorry brian <laughs> I'm assassinating Michelle. Uh, I challenge Took whether two. or not you have an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. what? Nice. <laughs> well played, well played. I wasn't well sure where it was. I was like, maybe she really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. That was an interesting challenge, too, because I don't usually yeah. think about that. When somebody assassinates me, I usually go, oh, I have to lie now about having right. Contessa. But whereas you got caught, you there know, was... Two assassins already well. out. Yep. There was three people left, including, well, four, including myself. Right. So the, I figured the assassin was right. maybe was on one of the other people on it. the table. Yep. That's and there fair. was no contestants to block it, so I thought, go for it. And I didn't even expect that. Why not? If you're, if you're going to, like, throw yourself in the fire, man. Yeah. The only concern, the, personally, the, my thought of if you have one card left and they have one card left and you go to assassinate, there's no reason just to die. You would at least challenge in one way or the other, though. So that's the only yeah. Only, yeah, that's kind true. of re retrospective thinking back. Might not have been. The, unless to you challenge have her to have. Well, to well, lie. Because she, she said she's making you question well, whether yeah, to you lie about it. having the assassin, and that's their last card. There's no reason to just like, oh, you killed me. Like, you at least challenge, because right. you challenge and you're wrong, you die. Yeah. If right. you don't challenge, you die. Point. That's another level because of it, actually. Right. That's a good point. There's no reason. I'm going to. I'm going to kill Matt. Really? Yeah. Really, you're going to kill me? Yeah. Why have the contest assassinate? You mean? Are you cool? You uh, doing? No, I'm sorry. You're you're no. correct. I'm assassinating. I have the contessa. You will not be able to do that. I'm gonna take that risk. Are you? I am. Oh yeah. All right. So you're challenging. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we'll do it. Cause... I'm gonna take the duke. <laughs> you get the duke. I'm the duke. I'm a tax. Sorry. Uh, I'm going Call to, it. to assassinate No, no, hold on. I'm calling BS on his tax action. Really? Why? Yeah. You're well, challenging Matt's challenging. possession of the turn. Duke? Yes. You're it's challenging turn. me? Oh, yes. Shit. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, you're up. I'm Nate. still going to assassinate you. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I actually have a contestant, so. I challenge that. No, you don't. I do, though. Oh, damn it. <laughs> That was an easy way for me to just lose the game. <laughs> All right, I'm out. It has it has definite layers that you sort of pick up on as you go. I didn't think of that to try and but beat yeah. out the Contessa lie. If you have the last Contessa, then you're trying to bait them up to say they have it. Good point. That, but then, good but the problem that comes good from that, be. which came in the first game with Brian, was having the last Contessa was great, but Brian still had the Duke and was going to earn enough money to clue mm. you, and then you're just screwed. Really, when it comes down to having only one card and everyone knows what you have, it's almost game over for you. As soon as everyone figures out what role you have, as soon as they're sure of what you have, Shuffle you need it. to switch your cards yeah. out. Because if anyone's positive, especially when you get down to one card, you have to do it quickly when hopefully people aren't paying attention. Yeah. If you've There's... got one card left, you can't ever let anyone know what you have. You can't. It's almost like you can't take the same role multiple turns. Like if you take the Duke three turns in a row and you've only got one card left, you're confident but that's also going to be your downfall because now everyone's going to know he doesn't really have an assassin. He doesn't yeah. have an ambassador. That's a really good thing about this game is that there's a way, no matter what the other person has, there's a way to counter it. Yeah. But you, it, to, to do that correctly, you need to know what they have. Yeah. I have an interesting thing that I, I read on the forums the other day about this game. It was, and it might cause some interesting discussion, um, people were saying that they played with their friends where one friend took sort of a stance and said, 
I'm not going to look at my cards at all because when you don't look at your cards, that's that gives you the best advantage of this game. And technically in the rules, it doesn't say you have to look at your cards as players can look at their cards immediately, which I thought yeah. that was an interesting thing. Personally, uh, I think that sort of almost breaks the game a little bit. I mean, I guess, you know what it is? It doesn't break the game. That person can sit there. Right? It's hard. If everybody does it, you're not even playing. Gives you. Okay. I agree with that because yeah. I, I was in. It seems like a way you would play. I was group. invited to a group that played Texas Hold'em, like on a regular yeah, basis, and I don't cards. play poker. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I'm not going to look at my cards, and they had no idea how yeah. to deal yeah. with that. You're going to do it. I'm just going to challenge you first turn. Yeah, and then potentially get knocked right out of the first turn. Yeah, yeah. Then, then you have to look at your you cards. Good, yeah, <laughs> then you have to look at it, and either you're dead, or right. now you know what you have. It's, yeah. it's totally against the spirit of the game. I like it. Yeah. I like the lying. If you're playing the, the game line. and like trying to see if someone's lying, it gets rid of that entire. Is thing. that yeah, how they? Is that how they say it in the instructions? The though? rules actually say you may look at your cards any time, but you can't. So I don't think it's any. That's interesting. I feel like I'd have to look up the clarification. I read the rules, and they it's very clear that it never says players have to. You can lie perfectly. Without That's like, interesting. I think that put, the gives you a hand like up that. at the beginning. Yeah, because I, I was like, at the oh, end, this it doesn't is... give you a hand, hands yeah. up at all no. it, because really to win, you need to have something specific. Yeah. You need to be doing something specific. If anybody challenges you, you don't like, you have a good chance of, of nailing them. Like, right. if you say, your oh, odds, I have this, and you're like, your well, odds are good, better with two you cards. You don't have what you say. Yeah. Right. You know, in the beginning, if you have no idea what you have, there's a good chance you don't have it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you might be able to do something that's sort of... It's almost like an exploit to the rules. Like, it doesn't really fit within the nature yeah. of the game. It's like all about well, bluffing. It's like, it's bluffing like and tweeting just because you, you should, don't get caught doing it. You yeah, should yeah. know what you have. It just... Because I mean, that's kind of the like, whole game. It's like trying to kick out, like, are you lying? I don't know what I have. Right. have. Let's right. all say, okay. As yeah. much as it's a disadvantage yeah, to look... I would I would love to... I mean, given any time that you call me out on... I don't know what I have. Your, the math is on your side to call me out on it. Right, so but, I'm going to turn on and call you out if you're playing that way. <laughs> but I can still beat you by dumb luck. But the right, thing right. is, you, you just but, have to take that chance. Right. right. But the thing is, is like, if I don't get emotional and I don't have I don't have to do any lying, so I can play on just facts of what I've seen yeah. and what you've said, so I don't get distracted true, by point. knowing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. you are generally you a very that. emotional person, so... <laughs> Yeah, you are. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do that, but I think that that's pretty. Especially with six players, that's a pretty instant counters. All right, I yeah. call you up. I think it's. I think it's an interesting question. Yeah, you know, it's like, why didn't you bring this up before we played? I, that's well. I specifically <laughs> saved it for the end. I think overall, I think we. I think we sort of covered that. That yeah. um, like a lot of the different angles of it. Sort of what's what. What I like about it, I mean, I think I think we all sort of like the game to a certain extent. Um, it's quick and enjoyable. Yeah, it's a quick game. It's fast, and of course, I think there's luck involved, definitely. But I think the the humor in it, sort of the excitement in the game, is just like that that lying, like the back and forth bluffing, right. and there's luck know, and lots of confusion. This especially around there's so game, much luck and confusion. Game yeah. two yeah. Um, was kind of frustrating. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that was the best of all the games. Game two point. was. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, it would be cool. Except we the have rules were some. Annoying. Yeah, we have some. Yeah. Like Michelle from game died round one. Which, why isn't anybody stopping Brian from taking four names? Ambassador! Ambassador! Like is that a thing? You took all three. No. Isaac. What? You took all you three did cards. It wrong. Oops. <laughs> Here, I'm going to put back this one so that I So shuffle. Want. Take two. Doesn't that sort of screw the whole mechanic, though? Because now Isaac absolutely knows the no, open cards. No, I can see. way I can I'm see. Gonna gonna say, Isaac's going to discredit that right <laughs> now and say, I'm not smart enough to figure out. Unless he's showing his cards to everybody right now anyway. It doesn't matter. Back up. They were talking to me. I just went. I was like, "Oh, sorry. I was just terrible. Better move back." What did you draw? Shut up. <laughs> He's already confused enough. Leave him I'm gonna take three. No, you're not. You mean Duke? He's duking. What? He's doing Duke. He's I attack. understand what he's attempting she's to do. She's blocking four and eight. I'm That's not four and eight. No, I have it. See? That's Wait, not four and eight. I didn't. No, you, you did. said it. You did. I blocked you. Um, I Can I? Oh yeah, sorry. Can I cha challenge? You no, can I, you I can can't. cancel someone's four and eight if you're a duke. If I'm an the other duke, right? Yeah, if you had both dukes. Right. Uh, no, I'm gonna cessate Michelle. Oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> that's a surprise. <laughs> 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 no, you're not. <laughs> if there's one target at the table, you're gonna hit. It's gonna be Michelle. You can. Oh, interesting. Every turn. I'm going to steal two from Isaac by using the captain to steal. 
Ooh. Uh, See all the words there? That's both. So you're saying you doesn't have I'm challenging have whether you have a captain. <laughs> okay. Babies. All right, so if I have a captain, you're dead, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now you put this here. Okay. Shuffle, the shuffle the whole deck and then draw, uh, draw another one. I can't believe you didn't draw the Contessa out of the deck, is what I'm... Because I was going to assassinate you. Are you? Yeah, well, you're not going to do much of anything. But you didn't. <laughs> I did. I wanted to say this at the beginning. Um... As for lying games go, this is the length of time that yeah. I only enjoy That's because a good battle point. battle star I can't I can't deal three with it because I mean, if I'm lying too. for three hours it's just tiring and yeah. I don't yeah. want to well, do get it so anymore. Well, you get so invested in it or, too. Or or I'm being lied to for three hours and at the end of it I'm like, oh well, that was my friend lying. To me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, this, like, that's a good point. This yeah. is even yeah, like a little. It's just because you're a nice person. <laughs> Less so intense than um, I was gonna say sweet, but I thought that would Avalon? be weird. Avalon, that would be weird. Like this, yeah, I love Avalon. Yeah, yeah. Um, but okay. this is kind of a nice balance where it's it's still sort of that fun part of lying, yep. but it's not so you don't get so intense or vested in it. There's almost more of a a personal investment in that, yeah. whereas really? this is very quick. Like I was your lie, the pers- your fun. lie, your lie lasts for a maximum of yeah. two seconds, and, and then you know. And there's teams on the other one. This is all just you yourself. Yeah, yeah. This game this is, is like this is like no, po- this is like an advanced poker almost. Like it's really yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, where it's more about playing the playing the people than play your turn. Yeah. Everybody starts kind of equal, and it and right. it shifts, and it it only shifts really, towards the end. Yeah, you know? I'm so good at shooting Merlins. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to that another time. Yeah, like like six times. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that in our next game session. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll have to do this again soon. Yeah. Hey everyone. Just wanted to jump in real quick and, and say thank you so much for watching today. We, we really hope this was something that was entertaining for you. And uh, we'd love to get your feedback on the show. So if you could leave your, your feedback in the comments below, we'd really appreciate it. Things that we can improve on in the future, maybe do more of or do less of. So overall, we just like to get what, what you guys want to see the viewers. So let us know what you think, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.